Okay, hi there. Here's the second video in our little series of synoptic essays focusing on Ghana. We've been through a very interesting case study on the Ghanaian economy. This question is about the new e-tax, the e-levy, controversial tax, that is being introduced in Ghana. And it's about the macro and micro impact. Quick reminder of extract three, which we went through in a couple of videos ago. So the, the, the Ghanaian government has brought in a new 1.5%, 1.5% tax. Now, that percentage sounds quite low, but of course, it's on every electronic retail payment in shops, bank transfers between people and inward remittances of more than £10. The government hopes the tax will raise £700 million, although that's relatively small compared to the £39 billion debt. But the aim is to raise tax revenue and help the government uh, fund new borrowing. The Ghanaian government aims to increase the total share of GDP taken by tax from 12% to 20% over the next five years. They think the tax burden in Ghana is too low and they need to lift the tax take. In Ghana, successive governments have struggled with implementing a comprehensive tax system due to the large informal economy. Mobile money apps provided a platform for bringing the informal sector to formal financial services. And the government thinks this is an opportunity to implement a tax system that reaches all Ghana's adult citizens. This is a fast-growing industry in Ghana. Uh, many, many startups, lots of firms, lots of inward investment and funding. Um, only 42% of people have a bank account. Uh, mobile data usage, however, is increasing rapidly. Uh, but um, that, that needs um, internet connectivity and it needs investment in electrification and things uh, to, to sustain that. So mobile money is a hugely important part of the Ghanaian economy, uh, but the government's introduced this 1.5% tax, which has been highly controversial, including I think, I think there's been some fisticuffs in Parliament when the vote was held. Using the data and your own knowledge, discuss one micro and one macro economic effect of the government introducing a new e-tax on mobile money transactions. Again, micro... Uh, if you get a synoptic question on this kind of thing, focus on industries, businesses and households. Focus on industries, businesses and households. You can't go wrong. So for businesses, higher costs, presumably. Uh, retailers may have to pay higher costs. And of course, in Ghana, you have a highly fragmented retail sector. Thousands and thousands of small retailers don't necessarily have the big, huge transnational, multinational corporations. And many of these small retailers already operate on very low, if you like, wafer-thin profit margins. So an electronic retail tax could have an impact on their costs, their profits, employment and investment. Equally, on evaluation, uh, the extra tax revenue, got to make it the Ghanaian government's trying to raise £70 million from this. In theory, that may be helpful to some businesses, particularly if it's invested in the economy. And if it helps keep bond deals down, uh, government bond deals, that itself can often lead to lower borrowing costs for businesses in the long run. My instinct is the easiest micro point to focus on in an exam, <laughs> don't forget you only need one micro point, is that an e-levy would impact directly on households. In particular, of course, um, it's applied to remittances of more than £10. So given the cost of money transfer is high, uh, this is ex essentially a double tax. People are being taxed when money is sent from outside Ghana back into Ghana, and then there will be an e-tax of 1.5% on top of that. And the fear is this is going to impact, uh, it's going to make a form of double taxation, particularly on poorer households who rely on remittances. And therefore, they'll have less income to spend and save. Only 42%, of course, have a bank account. Equally, remittance inflows are strong into Ghana, 5% of GDP, according to figure three. And there's increasing competition between money transfer businesses. So, in fact, some of those businesses might decide for commercial reasons not to pass on the tax. So that could offset the impact on consumers. Macro effects, again, probably a little easier to talk about. My sense is that students often find the macro a little easier than the micro. Who knows? Government finances, in theory, will benefit. Uh, increased tax revenue, £70 million expected. Uh, tax burden is low, and of course that revenue can be earmarked or hypothecated for investment projects. It could be specific things involving trying to bring down youth unemployment, which we know from extract four is 
It could be earmarked for investment in infrastructure uh, or the other essential public services. And it brings down the fiscal deficit. So in theory, the government finances will improve. But you could bring in the concept here of government failure, that this new e-tax may actually have unintended consequences, actually probably predicted consequences. People will switch, some people will switch to using cash in the informal economy. It depends on the elasticity of demand, essentially, for different types of financial services. So people will likely switch towards using cash. And of course, if people do that, there's less tax coming in and increased corruption. In countries where cash is king, money laundering is easier and corruption may go up, which would have negative consequences for, for Ghana in the long term. On the aggregate supply side, some people think that this e-tax makes Ghana less attractive to inward FTI, particularly in those kind of e-commerce and fintech businesses that have been growing so quickly uh, in recent times. So perhaps this tax could act as a disincentive for inward investment, reduction in online sales, and possibly a brain drain effect of younger people who've become attuned to mobile money transfer working for those businesses, they may decide to move elsewhere. Of course, much depends, as always, with the elasticity, uh, with the evaluation, sorry, much depends on how the tax revenue is used. So it could be used to invest in road infrastructure, digital security systems, etc., which would enhance aggregate supply. So there we go. That's a quick look at uh, the synoptic question on, on the e-tax. And in our fourth video of this little series, our third essay, we'll look at the micro and macro impact of remittances for Ghana.